Hello and welcome to another edition of Community Forum. My name is Joseph Feaster. I'm the host of the program. And I know I've been away for a bit, but nonetheless, I'm back here in the month of November. This is the month of Veterans Day. So I want to say happy uh, Veterans Day to all of our veterans and I thank you for your service. As always, I have a great guest and that's no different today uh, as well. I have with me today a person who serves as the county commissioner here in Norfolk County. Um, and I want to introduce him to you, those of you who may not know him, uh, but he's doing a fine job in that position, and that is County Commissioner Richard Stady. Good morning, Commissioner. Good morning, Joseph. Uh, pleased uh, to see you this morning. Thank you for yeah, having me. Well, happy to have you here uh, with us. Um, certainly, uh, that I'm sure that many of our viewing audience do not know the what the County Commissioner does, and so we're going to talk about that. But first and foremost, I'd like them to get a chance to get to know you as a person. So if you could tell us a little bit about your background and experience, and then we can talk specifically about what are the duties of the county commissioner. All right, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Thank you. Again, thank you for having me and, and good morning. Um, when I ran for county commissioner uh, last year and I was able to be elected, uh, I think some of the things I drew upon in the race uh, my experience and my education certainly served me and the voters, you know, saw fit to uh, cast their vote my way. It was a close race, but very honored to serve in this position. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I am a retired teacher. I spent many years as an educator in the Kent Public Schools. I also served as a coach and also as an athletic trainer. In fact, uh, truth be told, I probably took care of many uh, Stoughton uh, players when they played Canton. Uh, that was my job to treat them as best I could. Even though we're rivals, I always did the best I could. <laughs> I actually have a lot of friends in the Stoughton system and a lot of coaches like uh, Berkey, who's a football coach, he's still there. I know him quite well. So that helped me quite a bit, teaching many years and having an educational background. And I'll show you how that relates to county commissioner. Uh, along the way, I went to law school at night and I got my degree at Suffolk University Law School. And I now right. work as a, an attorney, a zoning attorney, part-time. Uh, so those two qualifications helped me a great, great deal when I ran for county commissioner. In addition, uh, politically, I served nine years in the town of Canton as a member of the select board, uh, three years as chairperson. Uh, and it's by virtue of being on the board of uh, the select board in Canton, I was appointed many years ago to also represent Canton to the Norfolk County <laughs> Advisory Board. Every town and every city in Norfolk County is entitled and does send one delegate to represent them on the advisory board. I believe at present, I believe uh, Chairperson uh, Mr. McCriskey, I believe, or member of the select board, McCriskey is the delegate to the Norfolk County Advisory Board currently. So every town sends somebody. Uh, I was Kent's delegate for many, many years. So having many years of experience on the county advisory board, coupled with being, an, uh, uh, you know, the first in experience as a member of the select board, uh, gave me a unique advantage over many other candidates. I brought that experience and knowledge of county finances to the job. And currently, I still serve as Canton Town Moderator. And that's a, a fantastic position and one I enjoy because um, it gives me an opportunity to serve the town, to interact with local elected officials and the citizenry as well. So I'm working with voters, uh, I've kind of got an idea of the issues that are going on on a local level. And I work with other moderators in the county as well, sometimes pairing up with them on different issues. So I felt I brought a, a diverse background, both in terms of education and, polit and politics to the position. Now, you might say, and again, I wouldn't blame you. What does a county commissioner do? How do those things? I'm going to get there, uh, uh, Mr. Commissioner, but I first, you know, I, I, I just was listening very closely to your background. Uh, and I just have to say, uh, thank you for your service. I mean, well, one, my my wife is an educator. So I, I, I certainly feel strongly about, uh, you know, about those who are teaching our young people and giving them the guidance. But you also have a sense of public service, all the positions that you've talked about. People don't recognize the time and commitment that you have to put in 
on a volunteer basis, other than your position when you were there uh, at the school. But other than those other positions, those were all volunteer positions, most of them on the evenings and people contact you constantly. So I think those who are listening to you, uh, certainly in Canton, uh, should be thankful that you were there and prepared to do that. And there's no easy task during town meeting. I was a town meeting representative here in Stoughton, so I know what the moderator has to do. Uh, you know, I just want to commend you. So I wanted to stop you here and give you your roses now because uh, you were extraordinary. And then the other thing you said, you're a zoning attorney and that's what I do. So I like you for that reason as oh, well. There you go. Get somebody <laughs> but and that can be an interesting position. Oh, after well, we could do a show on zoning at some we point could. in time, uh, for we sure. Could. But I, uh, I have to say, I've, I've scaled it back now that I'm serving as county commissioner. It's fascinating the amount of time, and I'm not, uh, I say this but again with all humility, it's in a lot more involved than one would think in terms of meetings. You know, um, if somebody serves on a local board, like the select board, uh, they might meet once a week, or I think in Canton, they meet now every other week. But back when I was serving, it was once a week. That times have changed. But um, county commissioners, we meet once a week on Wednesday, but truthfully, it's more than that. You know what I mean? There's always uh, other things going on. There's uh, follow-up phone calls. There's uh, follow-up meetings, there's negotiations with unions, you know, budget hearings, things like that. So uh, it's, it takes quite a bit of time. Again, definitely I'm enjoying it. I'm very excited to serve. You can tell I'm very interested in the job. And as I said, I brought to the bear, uh, to this position, a lot of experience that helped me out. But thank you. You know, I, I always felt um, when people asked me what was my favorite job, to be honest with you, teaching, I loved the classroom. I did. I enjoyed it well, thoroughly. Yeah. Uh, it I seems love like te most teachers, like I said, my wife is a teacher and in terms of that's certainly is a profession that she loves. Well, let's talk about, let's set the, the, the framework so that the viewing audience knows, one, what a county commissioner's responsibilities are, what it means to represent the county, because a lot of folks may not know what they mean. They may not know that you go all the way over to Quincy. <laughs> for instance, or how far south you go as far as representing what is Norfolk County, because your responsibilities are not just uh, Canton and Stoughton, your neighboring town, uh, it's, you know, or, and or Sharon, uh, it is broader than that. So why don't you set in terms of the geography, and then let's talk about the task and responsibilities that you have. Sure. Great question and great point. Um, well, Norfolk County, first of all, is made up Joe of, uh, of 28 cities and towns. The largest city is Quincy. Uh, Brookline is not too far behind and Weymouth as well. Uh, most of the entities have a town meeting or a town format. In other words, they have an elected select board. A few of them have city councils such as Franklin, Weymouth, uh, Braintree, Quincy, of course. Uh, and uh, uh, most of them will have elected select board members. Uh, it's, it's, it's strange in some degree because we have, um, uh, it's not contiguous, shall we say. Uh, we have Cohasset, which is part of Norfolk County. And to get to Cohasset, you actually have to drive through Plymouth County to get to it. Uh, what I was told was that it was kind of a deal made many, many years ago when they were balancing out the districts, just like they're undergoing, you know, they just redistrict, as you know, the Senate and the rep districts, right? For many, many, many years ago, they did it for the county. And I guess Cohasset ended up being part of our county rather than perhaps in another area. But uh, neither here nor there, it stretches like as far north as Brookline, if you will, or north of Boston. We all the way go down to Bellingham. Uh, we're down in the area of Norfolk. Of course, we have towns like Canton and Stoughton and Sharon and, and Dedham. For many years, the seat of county government has been and still will continue to be is Dedham. That's where the county commissioner's office is located. Uh, there's the Dedham District Court is there, the Dedham Superior Court is there, and of course, as you probably know, the Registry of Deeds, which we have to visit to record decisions. So we know that building quite well. Um, however, there are other courts, obviously, in different areas. For example, Stoughton has a court, Quincy has a court, and Brookline has a court, just to mention a few and rent them as well. So one of the duties of the county commissioner and one of the primary responsibilities is to oversee the upkeep and maintenance of the courts. That's one of our primary responsibilities. It's our duty to uh, make sure that they are cleaned and safe uh, during COVID. Certainly 
this task was very challenging as we wanted to make sure that the courts were constantly cleaned and uh, making sure that they were uh, serviceable. Of course, many courts shut down, again, as you probably know. Uh, there were many things held remotely or virtually or not held at all. But uh, we did our best and our very best. And I, I salute our maintenance department, which I feel does a great job in keeping our courts clean and up to date. Um, we also have an engineering department, which supplements, in some cases, towns, for example, that don't have a full-time engineering staff. Uh, towns like Avon, for example, come to mind. They may draw upon us to do road surveys or uh, trips on cars when they're doing studies you know, for traffic. We have our own roads, county roads, that we're also responsible for. In fact, recently, I can't give you the name of the street. I think it might have been uh, Plain Street or Page Street in Stoughton. Uh, might have been a county layout and someone wanted to get some land uh, to build a home. And so it became a little complicated. They were doing an A&R plan. You know what that is. And so they had to get the county engineers involved to kind of lay it out and then file the proper paperwork to facilitate the transfer from the county to the town of Stoughton to that individual. And it was a series of easements, you know. So anyways, we have an engineering department. Uh, we have a recreation department. Again, it's sort of anal analogous to some degree to a uh, town in terms of we have recreation, we have a Wallston golf course, tennis courts, basketball courts. Uh, we have our own, as I said, engineering department and towns might have a DPW. Um, we don't plow, we sub that out. We don't have a police or fire department per se, but uh, we do some of the similar things that a town does, but on a countywide level. Um, well, let even, me ask you this, just to drill down just a little bit more. I want to talk. I want you to talk a little bit more about the courts and what's happened with the Quincy Court, yeah. Quincy District Court, as sure. on that. But um, you know, again, you're educating me, and I and, and I and I pride myself on being a political guy and being knowledgeable about these things. But it sounds like to me that there's a fairly significant staff for Norfolk County. There is. Our budget, uh, compared to towns like, for example, Canton and Stoughton, it's small. We have a $30 million budget. I think okay. Canton's upwards of like 90 and what Stoughton must be in that vicinity, I would think, by now, 60 to 90 in that range. However, you know, we have, we have a maintenance department uh, that has to, again, keep all the buildings clean and maintain them all. Uh, so we have staff in all the buildings of the court, uh, plus a nighttime staff. Um, we do have our own staff in the commissioner's office, uh, small, but still functional. Um, and then we work a lot with the other departments in terms of, again, facilitating services. I look at the commissioner's office as one in which we are a facilitator. You're working with the treasurer and treasurer Mike Bellotti. All right? You're working with the, uh, uh, the register. You're working with... Uh, uh, the probate court, okay, uh, Colleen Briley. So it's our job to kind of be the chief executive officer, if you will, of the county and to oversee the operations of the county and to make sure it's being done efficiently. In addition, let me just add one important thing. We are also, in a way, like a school committee person because we have a school in the county and I'm very proud of that school. It's called the Norfolk County Agricultural Vocational School. Tremendous school. Uh, uh, has a, a great program and has a, a great staff. And uh, that's one of the things that we want to talk about. And again, having the education background and being a classroom teacher. And then later in my career, I did have the good fortune of being a director. I brought those kind of skills and I bring that skill set to problems we see right now at the Aggie School. So, um, you know, we, we have, like I said, yeah, we have a school, we have a recreation, we have an engineering department, we've got the courts to maintain. And some other things I can get into, and uh, it's a it's a very very vital vital um, position. I think one of the things I would like to get into, and I I'm hoping you're going to ask me about, is it's become even more important with the latest act of the government to give funds to the county called the OPA, which we can talk about. Well, I'm, I'm I am definitely going to get to the American Rescue Plan of Action. I'm going to get to that in a minute, but I want to walk us through stay local for a minute. Sure. And uh, just drill down for a few more questions about it, because I know I mentioned about, um, you know, obviously, uh, while we are your, your rival on Thanksgiving Day here in Stoughton and Canton, I, you know, the court is positioned in, the district court is, is in Stoughton. And as well as I know, uh, there may be some discussion about what's happening at the Quincy Court, which I've 
I've tried cases there uh, at, 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 at the quits. I thought it was a nice complex, but I understand there may be some things going on as far as changing that particular court. Um, and that one other thing, as you were speaking, I, you know, and this is more inquiry because I'm, I'm learning so much from you about what a county commissioner does, because uh, I knew nothing about all of that staffing and all. Are county commissioners paid? Yes, we are. are. We are. Yes, you are. You're, you're, okay, so I wasn't even sure if it was a paid position or not. Probably okay. for the first time, I'm getting a salary and I can't complain about it. I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm very privileged to get that. But Good. Um, Good. Well, 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 I'm a believer in most of the city. I'm, you know, here in Stoughton, they know that I push these issues and I pushed that when I was the interim town manager. I think that many of the board, persons who serve on boards should at least receive a stipend because there's a insurmountable time when you serve on the select board, when you serve on the planning board, when you serve on the zoning board of appeals, you know, besides taking all the angst and grief for those that don't support the positions that you take, you expend a lot of time. So I'm a believer in that there should be stipends, but you know, uh, I'm not sure politically if I would win. That's why I don't run for anything but cover, uh, Mr. Commissioner. It, it's interesting because I'll say quickly as a moderator, uh, every year the salary of elected official comes up and uh, I did not get paid as a member of the select board um, uh, because I was teaching and I had to excuse, I had to recuse the pay, which was, it was a nominal stipend, a nominal pay. But the pay the Canton board gets now would have been the same pay I would have got many, many years ago. And yet that draws more interest and debate on the floor of town meeting than say a $5 million project on water. Oh, that's right. You know, it's funny. Oh, yeah. That's the nature of town meeting. I don't care if you go to Canton, so, you know, it's funny, but that's, you know, that's the nature of town meeting. But well, I, I, well I, as, as we say in Zona, you have more fight on a, uh, trying to build a single family home in a single yeah. family district than you have for building a complex. So, so true. Uh, so it true. Is, it's, you know, right. And I know when I served as a town meeting member here in Stoughton, those are the ones, the issues that used to aggravate me. We passed Twenty million dollar deals and and gets hung up on five thousand dollars. So, uh, so true. Uh, so I right. fully appreciate that. How is the fiscal health in um, in in the county at presently? Because you know COVID had an impact on a number of things. I don't know. Obviously, you're not responsible for tax collection, et cetera. And lastly, where does the county's uh, monies come from? Who who who, who provides that thirty million dollars? Very good, excellent question. Well, uh, I'd have to say. Thankfully, uh, I'm in a position where uh, our finances at this present time are very strong uh, uh, compared to many years ago when I was elected to the board and we were grappling with things like Prop two and a half and where we're going to get the next dollar. The county's in good shape, uh, primarily because a significant amount of our revenue uh, is generated from the deeds excise tax. And as you know, as a real estate zoning attorney, uh, the market's been crazy. Right. People are refinancing. Lots of closings are going on. And a certain portion of the deeds excise tax uh, goes to the state. A certain amount is kept by the registrar and a certain amount goes to the county general funds. So together with that, that money uh, has created a, I shall say, carefully a surplus. And we are planning very carefully what to do with that surplus. I think, again, I could talk about that in terms of what we're doing presently and how we're planning that out. But most of the money, well, a significant amount of the money, therefore, comes from the deeds excise tax. We also get a certain amount from every town. Every town is assessed on their on their uh, so-called cherry sheet, uh, is assessed a certain amount to pay to the county. I can't tell you what Stoughton is, can is. I could look it up. But like it's based on your per capita. Um, third, we get a certain amount from fees, different kind of fees that are collected. For example, in the Aggie School, there might be fees for athletics you know, for sports and things like that. So a certain amount is generated by fees, a certain amount has been by property tax, and certainly the deeds excise revenue has done a great thing in terms of giving us some extra boost. So answer your question, uh, we are in good shape this year. We're actually uh, in a surplus of about $5 million. So what we did and what we are doing is carefully looking at, for the first time, a capital outlay program. Unlike, for example, Stoughton and Canton, and I'm sure all the towns that might be listening in who have capital programs and capital budgets, the county never had that. The county never did that. If something came up, for example, concerning the roof at the Aggie School, they would either have to borrow the money, uh, create a bond, or take it out of what we call 
unappropriated balances. We don't have free cash. Unlike again, county financing is a little different than local financing, but once you get the terminology down, you'll see they're very analogous. So instead of having free cash to certify, we have, for example, an unappropriated balance. Well, sometimes that might come because a position wasn't filled or someone left halfway through the year and a position wasn't filled. You follow what I'm saying? So you have some yes. extra money. So they would take some of that money, move it around a little bit, of course, legally at a meeting, and then you would take that money and put it towards whatever happened to come up. This is where I should go back to explain the county advisory board plays a role. The county advisory board came about because they wanted, if you will, a finance type board to oversee the county commissioners. And that's, the, again, the best analogy I can give you is just like you might have a finance board or a warden committee that looks over the spending at town meeting or looks over the spending of your elected officials. That's what the advisory board does. So we work with them. And we have a good relationship with them when we need to kind of move money and we explain why we're moving it and where it's going to. But this year, like I said, we have a surplus. So we've developed a capital program in conjunction with a consulting group uh, that we hired to look at the entire operation of the county. We're looking at every single department. We're examining every facet, personnel, operations, you know, in terms of what, the, what we're doing now, where are we now, and where do we want to go? We're looking at technology. We're examining everything. And week by week, if you go into any of the county meetings, you'll see each week we're bringing up a department head and actually asking those people to explain what do you need and where do you want to be. And as part of that, we're going to fund some of that out of capital outlay. I want to go back because I know I've mentioned it a few occasions and I would just want to circle back and just at least get your response on that. I've mentioned about the Quincy Court a number of times and I know right. they I didn't elicit a response from you. Why don't we, why don't you respond to that? I know there's something that's going on. That's right. one issue. And then the other one is, you know, this is your first term in this position as the county commissioner. And I want to know, one, what made you think about running? And I think I know the answer to that, but I don't want me to have the answer. I want you to give it to the viewing audience. And then secondarily, what uh, what has happened since that time, now that you served your position, what are you seeing? What are some of the, you know, the challenges and what are some of the opportunities uh, yeah. uh, that it is? So if you could start with the Quincy Court piece and then talk sure. about why you well, ran, what you are seeing in your first year sure. as a county commissioner. I'm probably, I would say, a little bit atypical in that um, uh, I want to be a proactive county commissioner. The fact that I'm out here with you, talking to you, and I've been doing this as much as I can in other communities, uh, I want to be transparent. And I want to be active. And so when I first was elected, uh, immediately I contacted uh, the maintenance director, John McGowan, and I asked him to take me on a tour of some of the courts. Now, I have to be honest with you, I have not seen all the courts. Uh, I have not. It's suddenly other work has come up in the county. But I did take a look at the Stoughton Court, the Rentham Court, and the Denham Court. And I, I have heard and I have seen Quincy as well. So let's talk about Quincy and Stoughton. But I'm going to take about, let's do Stoughton first. Stoughton closer to home. Stoughton, of course, because it's so close. And of course, it's in my backyard. I have a particular interest in it. It needed a ventilation system. And that came about, again, directly, indirectly, because of COVID. Uh, so we had to put out to bid to improve the ventilation system. We secured it. Unfortunately, uh, when they were doing the bid, they neglected the fact that the roof would not accommodate the newer model these, these systems we have now, they're 20 or 25 years plus in age. The newer models have a different design and a different weight. And so we're going to have to make some roof repairs and make it structurally strong until, and that's done, and probably with winter setting in, it may not happen until spring, but we're going to have a brand new ventilation system and the air circulation system for Stoughton Court. So there's the good news. So Stoughton Court, uh, I've met with, uh, I think it's Justice Malley, uh, Dan Malley is over there. And, uh, the, and the clerk magistrate, and we're in constant contact as needed. Mm -hmm. In Quincy, unfortunately, it's, a, it's got to the point where um, uh, it's, it's in tough shape. We're doing the best we can, but the uh, uh, DCAM has met with us and decided that um, they would like to do something a little different. And I think this could be the way perhaps of the future, and they're using it as a model, and that was gonna be called a, a um, a social justice center that would be almost all encompassing. You would have a, a facility and perhaps 
a large one at that, that would encompass, there would be a superior court there. They might even handle some, uh, some juvenile matters there. And there's been talk of perhaps, perhaps even including some probate matters there. So this is on the drawing board and you're getting this, this is fresh information for you and the listeners. Uh, this isn't gonna happen tomorrow, it isn't. It's not gonna happen next year. Uh, I'm looking at this as perhaps maybe happening during my term, which by the way, a county commissioner has a four year term. Uh, thank goodness for that. Uh, and perhaps if I'm uh, around next time, if I have that good fortune, maybe completed, you know, uh, got down the road in 06, 07, 08. But it is it's definitely on the drawing board. State is pushing to close the Quincy District Court, close it, purchase the land from us. They would purchase that land. It'll be only land there and then build their own social uh, justice center. Now, again, that could take a couple of years. And one of the questions I asked when they came out to us, I said, well, in the meantime, what happens to serving the residents of Quincy and that particular area? Where do the cases go? And they would be looking probably to rent or lease space in a building that would be suitable and use that as a, say, temporary court facility. Uh, so the, if you will, the, the, the bell is tolling for Quincy. I would say um, uh, it's probably got, got lifespan of maybe another three or four years. Again, though, and, and I, I tell you this honestly, I know you've been involved a little bit in politics. Things could change. And again, we don't know what's going to happen with our, you know, our budgets. Sometimes year to year, you never know. But at the present time, that's the latest from the state. They would like to have, see Quincy close down. I should point out, too, the relationship between the county and the state. We maintain the courts and we do all the other things you need to keep the court going. And then we submit a bill to the state and the state reimburses us for that. So that's another source of revenue. So the state reimburses the county for the maintenance and the upkeep and the repairs of the court buildings. Well, so, it sounds, you know, again, uh, and, and I, I'm getting an education on what a county commissioner does, and I'm sure the viewing audience will as well. Um, I, I want to talk about a, a number of issues that are near and dear to me. Uh, but before I get there, talk about, because we have a jail, that's, uh, you know, in, uh, uh, in Dedham, that's, uh, you know, that's in our, in Norfolk County. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about the relationship there. I know you mentioned there in terms of some of the excise tax and other things that may go towards paying for the correction. I, I believe you said that, so let me not put words in your mouth. I'm not sure exactly how the, how the jail is funded, but what is the relationship between the county commissioners and, and, the, and, the, uh, and the sheriff's department? Yeah, no, uh, I may be perhaps with misquoted, so I apologize. It used to be when I, uh, for many, many years, serving on the advisory board, uh, the sheriff department uh, under, for example, the late, and I will say the great Cliff Marshall, and also under uh, Mike Bellotti and others, was, if you will, part of the county and reported to the commissioners for their yes. funding. And then there was a movement to break them away, it was led by, I'm not sure who, but different sheriffs across the state petitioned to be separate and to be under the state instead. So the county sheriff now, even though they are county sheriffs, have very little interaction with the county commissions. They have a separate budget. Uh, they get their funding from the state. Uh, they report to the state and uh, it's, we interact with them. For example, uh, Sheriff McDermott, who is the new sheriff, uh, will once in a while, you know, interact with us on different kind of community activities, uh, things of that nature, but we don't have anything directly in terms of funding them anymore, not anymore. Let me, uh, now I'm going to go to the drilling down to the issues which are near and dear to me, and I know you talked about the you're being transparent, and it sounds like you are in, engaging and involved and committed County Commissioner. So once again, I commend you for that because some people take the job but don't do the job. <laughs> so I'm uh, glad that you're you're there. Let's. I'd like you to talk about again for our viewing audience because I didn't know that there were the potential for all of this engagement and and oversight by the County Commissioners even into some local matters. So I'd like you to talk about if one was interested in working for the county if there is such a thing, how do they do that? I'm always concerned about diversity in all aspects within 
uh, in, uh, within, and I would like to know it with regards to Norfolk County or what is the position of the county commissioners. And lastly, one which is, uh, I call it my ministry, and that's the issue of mental health. Um, I've dealt with that conversation, in fact, just recently on Channel 5, but had that conversation with Sheriff McDermott, and I know that uh, there will be a new sheriff uh, next year, but with Sheriff McDermott and others, could you address a little the jobs, diversity, and whether there is any conversation about uh, mental health uh, on, on, on your level at the county commissioner's level? I'll do the best I can. And I also do want to go back to what happened when I first got elected. That's a big one. I mean, a lot has happened, a lot. Well, why don't you go to that and then, then I, we can talk yeah, about this. I might be able to wrap that into you know one okay. big, long answer, but I'll break it up. I'll tell you this, I, I, I've hit the ground running and you, you've nailed it politely. Uh, uh, I'm not gonna be one of those guys who'll just sit there and you know uh, show up one day a week because there's more to it than that. Um, in the one short year now that I've been in office, uh, within two weeks, the director we had uh, left for the town of Dighton to become their town manager. And so immediately we were left without a director. All right, we were like a ship without a rudder, which meant we had to get uh, resumes and we had to have interviews. We had a search committee. And the way we did it again, I want to take, I want to make the county more professional. I want to remove it from perhaps some of that political taintedness of the old days. So we hired a consulting firm to vet, vet out the best candidates. And then we interviewed the final three and they were all good, but we have landed a gem. I tell you, if you get a chance to talk to John Cronin, you'll be duly impressed. John Cronin is our new director. Uh, he is a very thorough professional and he is doing one heck of a bang up job in terms of uh, making the changes that we want and bring us into the 21st century. Uh, he comes with a background of finance from the state police. He has a wealth of experience. He's actually an elected member of his own town uh, where he lives in his community in Hopkinton. And he's just, uh, just a terrific person to have. So we really had to replace the director. No sooner did that happen, the superintendent at the Aggie School announced a retirement. And so we had another search committee and we had a candidates and we had interviews. You're getting the picture here. And we had to select a new superintendent. <laughs> I knew some is John Martin, doing a wonderful job. He comes from uh, Franklin Tri-County. He was director of special ed, uh, and he's doing a great job getting himself fit in. A month ago, our business manager announced his retirement. So we now have filled that position. And I would also add very quickly, we also replaced an engineer who left, oh, by the way, along the way. So I looked at it this way. You can look at it as challenges. I look at it, Joe, as opportunities, because I've had the very good fortune if you will, of being a new commissioner and yet, in a way, assembling people of my same ilk, if you will. So I feel very comfortable with the director, the superintendent, the engineer, and of course, even a new business manager. Got four very key people are in place, four people who have the mindset that we want to have a county that is relevant, transparent, and moving forward. And, and that's a great thing. Now, let's go to your question, too, about diversity and also about mental health. I think that was something that was talked about. I remember in the campaign, I remember uh, Sheriff McDermott and other candidates talking about that in terms of their, their uh, jail system. Um, I would like to see if possible, and it could happen, I would like to see the county perhaps have a county nurse or a, a county health, if you will, system. We don't have that. And so we don't really have the structure, if you will, to deal with you know mental health, if you will, per se. Um, I know in Bonstable, they actually do have a, a nurse, a nurse that works with the other nurses in the towns and coordinates uh, benefits and coordinates other services. And certainly mental health could be one of those things that we could address. There's an opportunity uh, that we might be able to do something like that. And I, I say this in a, a very, very general way without making any promises, but coincidentally, coincidentally, we have a speaker coming on one of our meetings very soon who wants to petition us for money to begin a mental health program in the county and to establish perhaps a part-time nursing position to facilitate issues on mental health. So you've nailed it on the, and that's, that's <laughs> I know we had, did not talk about this, but it's ironic. Uh, this person is seeking the help of the county 
uh, to see if we can get this up and running. I'm a big proponent of that. I'd love to see it go forward. Now, again, well, you can add me to that conversation. I could, like I said, I consider that uh, my ministry. Uh, so my sense is uh, to the extent that that person or John Cronin is going to be the lead in that conversation right. uh, with the county commissioners would be more right. than happy to, to weigh in. I sit on a mass association for mental health and involved with Samaritan. So I have a wealth of exactly. knowledge in that area. Well, you know what I'll do is I'll follow up after I can give you some contact info on our web link. And you can always go on the web link and you can check the on the website. It will say our agenda is always posted. Again, being transparent. And uh, you would see, I, I don't, I don't want to, say it's next tomorrow, tomorrow's our, our meeting day, but it might be the following week, but we have someone coming in really quickly too, uh, without being too short-sighted. We have money coming from the federal government. The federal government uh, enacted, as you probably have heard, the American Rescue Plan of Action of 2021. And in this particular case, they are sending some money directly to the towns. They're sending some to the states, but they're sending a large portion to the county. They designated the counties to serve as the facilitator of the money. This is a great opportunity for the counties to step up, a great chance for us to be in the front and to be active and visible. Norfolk County alone is getting over $137 million from the federal government. And what we did in preparation for that, again, in terms of what we did for our work, we decided to meet with other counties and together think about and talk about ideas of how are we going to operate this fund? What are the qualifications? Uh, what are the what are the risks involved? And and so on and so forth. So we met with Plymouth, we met with Bristol, and we met even with Boston County to talk about some of the good and bad side effects of managing funds like that. Of course, working with Treasurer Bellotti. So after many many months of meetings and an awful lot of hard work by many people, many people, uh, I'm very happy to say that our portal is up and running and that towns can now apply for their share. And what's, for example, relevant for you, the town of Stoughton can get up to $5.6 million in money from the American Rescue Plan of 2021. Now, they won't get it all at once. They won't, we're gonna do it in a, a rolling out program. Towns that apply now will get say one fourth of their qualified amount. And then we hope to spread it out over three years and then doing it in a very orderly way. Uh, there are certain qualifications they have to meet. Of course, there are applications they have to fill out. And again, we've been doing a lot of this, Joe, without, under the radar. We've been having meetings with town managers and members of the advisory board and elected officials, like your own Mr. McCriskey and other people like that. They've been listening into our meetings. We've had separate meetings with John Cronin. I give him a lot of credit. Uh, he's worked very hard on this, as we all have. And uh, it's been very well vetted. So we have two accounting firms to oversee the funds. We have a, a law firm, Minson Levin, is gonna handle any legal issues we have. Uh, it's a top-notch program and we're, we're very excited about it. Very excited. I'm not surprised that my uh, uh, good mentee, uh, Mo Cowens is over there at, uh, at Minson Levin. I don't know if that's whom you're dealing with. He's a Stoughton uh, resident, but also I know he was a managing partner or something over at Minson Levin, but Minson Levin has a long storied history of working with local government. So I'm not surprised that you have them. I wanna come back to the issue I, and I'm really pleased and I'm gonna definitely check in with our town manager to make sure that they're aware of and plan to pursue the opera dollars. Uh, you know, I just circled that on my uh, notes here and, and put a star next to it. But let's, I wanna come back to it because it sounds like in talking with you, um, it seems, you know, you are very thoughtful and forward thinking uh, in, 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 in your own manners and, and thoughts and ideas. And that comes through very, very clearly. I want to come back to the diversity issue only because I think that particularly when, when you have the dollars, you have the ability to also establish the policies and the criteria. Um, is the county giving any thought to looking at that? And diversity comes in many forms, not only in terms of race and gender, it, it's in terms of veterans, uh, uh, it, it, you know, uh, persons with disabilities. It comes in many forms because oftentimes people think of diversity just on the basis of race, and that's not true. There's many ways in which to do it. Is there any thought um, or any discussion having been held by the county commissioners on that? And in that, I also 
because I, I, I didn't know the answer as I was thinking about it, how many county commissioners make up the commission <laughs> So as well? So those, if you could address both of those, that would be great. Sure, let's do that second one, uh, Joe, first. Uh, there were three county commissioners, and they said I'm newly elected, being elected last year. Um, <clears throat> the veteran on the, on the uh, board is uh, Peter Collins from Milton. Uh, he has the longest running uh, service. Um, he succeeded his father, actually. His father was a commissioner before him. Uh, he's from Milton. And our chairperson is uh, Joe Shea, a former city clerk for many years. And uh, Joe is serving, uh, I think, in his second term um, as a county commissioner. Um, we get along fine. Uh, it reminds me a little bit, and I mean this again in a, in a nice way, of when I first served as a select board member. Back then, Canton had three. Now they have five. I think Stone has five as well, I think, right? But Kent yes. went with three for a while. And uh, there were many times when the, the vote was two to one. We had disagreements. But afterwards, we always put any kind of difference we had aside. And we got along great. Because our goal was always what we thought was doing the right thing in the best interest of town. And I will tell you right now, there's been some votes when my short time I've been there, when I've been on the short side. I'm not afraid to say that. We've had some issues that have come up um, that um, I have had some polite disagreements with my colleagues on. But overall, I think we're getting along great. And I think the county, what's most important to me and to all of us is the county is moving forward. We really are. If you talk to people on the outside and you say, you know what, where are we at? Honestly, not because of Richard Stady. I play a small role in it. I'm just one of many, but the county is moving forward. I'm very proud of what we're doing with the American Rescue Plan. I'm very proud of the work we're doing with the Aggie School to make it better. Uh, I'm very proud of the other things that we're doing together to make our courts cleaner and more modern. Uh, we've got a way to go. We've got more work ahead of us, but certainly with the people we've assembled, things are moving forward. Now, to answer your other question, um, I'm also very you know, proud to say that in recent time, we don't have that many openings. We only can fill as a vacancy comes up. And if you look at in terms of your, the way you couched it, uh, we do try to give as much help as we can to people who are veterans or to people with disabilities or people who have other kinds of challenges. So in that regard, yes, we are making progress. Again, could we do a little more? Absolutely. There are things we should look at more carefully, uh, but I think we're doing a good job in that regard in terms of, again, moving us forward into the 21st century, who we should be. Now, you know, again, you know, we're, we're coming up uh, on, let's say about, uh, about 10 minutes uh, that we have here. So I just want to just give you a time check so you have a sense uh, because we've covered a lot. And uh, quite frankly, to the viewing audience, this isn't something that you and I staged in terms of, oh, this would be the oh. questions that we're, we're having a conversation here. Right. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, I've done this long enough in order to be able to uh, elicit from a, from a great guest such as yourself, the types of things that I think I wanna know and certainly I think the viewing audience would want to know. And so we talked about specific things that are going on. We've talked about you know, how you came to want to run for and be successful in this position. And I do remember the campaign because I knew some of your opponents uh, in that. And uh, so I'm glad that you were successful in that. Um, but we're now coming upon it um, soon because we're already in November, we're coming upon a new year. So what what look looking ahead to 2022, what are some of the, you know, I like to do the SWOT analysis, you know. Uh, so the question is what, what are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and uh, threats uh, that you see going forward in 2022? We're going to be, I believe, if I stand knowing my politics, isn't that the, uh, when is the gubernatorial election next year or the year after that? I mean, I think it's next Governor year. Next year. Yes, it's yes. next year. So, I mean, all of that, all the things you talked about with Quincy and all, and right. those types of relationships with DCAM, uh, you know, and, and like I said, I'm a political guy. I've served in federal government, you know, state government, local government. Yep. I've just never run for anything because I run for nothing but cover. Yeah. Uh, but but nonetheless, I'm familiar with those relationships or or not that take place. So what do you see portends for 2022 as a, as the county commission? Those are great questions. Um, uh, you know, and I'd be remiss if I didn't give you a little background that 
maybe will help you too a little bit, my audience. Um, even though we are rivals, and I say that, you know, in a nice way, um, I have a great affinity for Stoughton. My dad, who's passed on for many, many years, was a builder, old-fashioned builder, and actually built many homes in Stoughton, many homes in Stoughton. I think that's what drew me to being a zoning attorney, because I grew up as a kid working with him uh, for very, very little or no pay, as you know. Those <laughs> days, you don't get paid for your father. You know, you get up and do it. Yes, dad. But um, I learned a lot by being around him and working with uh, you know, bricklayers and plasterers and, and carpenters and things like that uh, gave me a great appreciation for what it takes to uh, make a living and also hard work and also what it takes to the housing industry. So I, I've got a good knowledge of Stoughton. It's funny. I, can, I know some of the streets because I've traveled them and I look at them and I go, I'm very proud of how Stoughton has a new high school. You know, they've made Grace Drive, they have a new library. I look at our neighbor and I go, this is fantastic because you're moving forward. And I'm sure in Stoughton, they're looking at other things. What more can they do? And again, APA could be the key. APA can be used for making water improvements, sewer improvements. You can use it for revenue replacement. There's a whole list of criteria. You can't use it uh, to give people pay raises, so you can't do that. But you can use it for certain guidelines and, and put it in the right way. You can make your town, that's a good town, even better. So what do I look for in the future? I would say three things. One is I want to continue the implementation of the APA program and to make sure it's understood by every town and that they're using it to the fullest. That's clearly no question. That's one of the things I, I wanna see done. Uh, secondly, I would say one of the challenges we face is the Aggie school. And it's because of the structural financial deficit. Um, for many years, um, the tuition, frankly, just was never adjusted to keep pace with the changes in terms of cost of living, heating, lighting, let alone teacher salaries. They never looked at that. And uh, again, when I was first elected, I said, last time you did this, my knowledge was 10 years. And it was pointed out to me, it's been 20 years. It hasn't been adjusted. You can't do that. So we're going to have to make some hard decisions to raise the tuition and to increase the revenue to our Aggie school. And where does that money come from? Well, it'll come from town of Stoughton, town of Canton, other towns will have to pay a little more. But again, the amount of money that you'll have to pay it's only for the students that you send there. And to me, I look at it as a trade-off. We're gonna be giving you millions of dollars in opera, and we're gonna be asking perhaps for a few extra thousand dollars back to help our teachers and students keep that school on a high level. So that's one of the challenges we have. And third, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it, is that as I said, we hired, it came before my time. I can't take credit for this group, but the commission is, uh, before um, I was elected, had retained the services of a group called the Abrahams Group. And they are now, they're doing their job now. They completed their job. And what they did, as I said, they examined every facet of the operations of the county. And we are using that report and we're examining that report. And truthfully, we're discussing that report. That's what's going on right now. That process is going to take us all the way through our budget process into next year. So certainly I know what I'll be doing is a guidepost. I'll be looking at, for example, our IT department. We're going to be looking at our maintenance department. We'll be looking at the Aggie school and other departments to examine in terms of what did the consultants say? How does it measure up? And then how do we want to deal with it? I'm not going to say that um, we're going to take every recommendation because no one does that. No one does that. When you get a consultant, they're a consultant. You look at what they offer you. You talk to your department leaders. You talk to your personnel. And together you come up with a plan to make it better. I could sneak in one more thing if I could. I suppose it's 3A, 3B. Um, we, have a, uh, we had a veteran agent who uh, did a terrific job. He was a person who would fill in, again, when a town needed someone. Uh, Avon comes to mind. I will tell you, my own town of Canton, uh, Tony Andriotti, who was a fantastic veteran agent, did so many things to help our vets. When he you have a new veterans agent at the present time in Canton. That's Arafat. right. That's right. Very yeah. good. Excellent. Well, sir. I charge him. I know him from home oh. base. I'm involved oh. with home base. Oh, my God. Fantastic. He's doing a great job. But before yes. him, before he was hired, our county vet agent helped out the town of Canton and filled okay. in. You follow what I'm saying? So um, I'd like to see that department uh, a little bit more invigorated and perhaps expanded. It's, it's going to take a little work. That could be something I'll be working on over the next couple of years. But I'd like to see that department if we can expand it. We were thinking that way. And it has to do with, again, how many towns 
don't have their own veteran agent, you know how many towns need it. There were towns like Norfolk and Bellingham, if you will, had talked about you know doing something with the county. So I would say that lends itself into my last goal, and that is to improve regionalization. The county should do more, if possible, regionalization of services. Uh, look at ways where we can work together with other towns and promote regional services to save money and make it more efficient. So uh, those are things on the drawing board. Well, coming back to the veterans piece, and since uh, Veterans Day, probably by the time this program may, or may right. have already passed this year, right. yeah. but that would certainly be a great, uh, great, uh, great announcement. I, you know, I, you know, I, the men and women who, uh, who protected us, I think that, you know, certainly we have a good Stoughton uh, uh, veterans agent who is soon to be retiring. Uh, I mentioned your veteran agent in uh, in Canton, and I know we have certain programs that exist for for veterans. But I certainly feel with with particularly with the dollars, and I'm going to have that conversation with the town manager. There may be more that we might be able to do. I think there's some housing. I think there's some health programs. I think there's a number of different programs offered for veterans. So maybe some of those dollars may go in there. And, and, and certainly I'm going to offer to you, and I'll say this publicly, I'm, I'm always interested both as a consultant, but also as a person who deals with a lot of these issues and have some of those relationships, would it be helpful or to the county, um, call upon me. Uh, you know, I'd certainly, Commissioner, I would certainly uh, you know, at least lend my knowledge and experiences. I've been around for a while, uh, for sure. And um, if I could be helpful on that. We have about two minutes or so. Is there anything that we have yet to cover that you um, might want to do as a, as a closeout to the program? Uh, just to let the, net, the viewer audience know, uh, any thoughts that you have, any, you know, ideas? Any things that you might be able to do since, you know, we do get parochial and so Canton and Stoughton, we hope that we're first in your heart. Uh, so anything you'd like to add before we close? Well, one is, first of all, thank you. Thank you for allowing me an opportunity to speak to you. I've learned a lot as well, and I certainly will be calling on you. I intend to follow up. Uh, thank you to my friend Roy Cohen, who we go way back, way back in the day. We won't say how many years, but I've known Roy for a while and he, when he was served the town of Stoughton as well. Uh, secondly, thank you to the voters, uh, because you have um, fulfilled a dream of mine. I always wanted to uh, serve in the county. Uh, obviously, my love of the county as a member of the advisory board uh, showed my commitment to the county, and I was rewarded with that, with the opportunity to serve right now. Um, I look for challenges uh, as opportunities to make our, uh, our society better. I was raised by old school parents who believed in giving back, and I, I would say I've hopefully I've done a good job and trying to raise my own family that way. I'm blessed with five kids and four boys, one girl, and they're all having their own families now, most of them, and they're doing a good job. I'm proud of that as well. I suppose that's my proudest achievement, being a parent. But uh, working as a county commissioner, it's a fascinating job, Joe. It puts you in contact with uh, local officials. It gives you in contact also with our state reps, our state delegation, and the federal delegation. Uh, I've attended rallies with uh, Congressman Jake Oshenklaus and Sharon, uh, in promoting anti-Asian uh, hate. I've been uh, working with uh, Congressman Lynch, of course, on some of the bills involving opera. I, I've, I've had contact, of course, with our own state delegation. So it's a fascinating position and it, it's an opportunity to do a lot of good. So I hope that uh, uh, with the Lord's help, I'll be healthy and, and strong and fit and do my job for the next four years. I'm not up for election next year, which is great. I have, have a kind of work on these issues, you know, but uh, I would certainly welcome a chance to come back again and talk to you in a related time. And, and, but I certainly would welcome your input on some of those mental health issues and other issues as well. Well, Mr. County Commissioner, thank you so much to our viewing audience. This is County Commissioner of Norfolk County, Richard Stady. If you have any concerns on the county wise, uh, certainly he is a person who you can call. And we will post, I'm sure, the way to contact you. Uh, I'll leave that to Roy Cohen, your good friend, my dear friend, to do that. So, Excellent. Mr. Commissioner, have a great day. Happy Veterans Day and stay safe. Thank you, sir. You as well. Pleasure.